The Caps lose Orloff and Hathaway to the Bruins. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form, so head on over to YouTube and check it out. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at Locked On Caps. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, the news broke. The news that I saw coming from a long, long ways away. And this is just the beginning of many to come is that the Capitals dealt Dmitry Orloff and Garnet Hathaway to the Bruins for Craig Smith and some draft picks. We'll talk about that in the show. Then later we will talk about ultimately why did the Capitals decide to do it? Why did they decide to do it now? We'll talk about that. And then later in the show, we will talk about how the Capitals dropped their sixth game to the Anaheim Ducks. But just to get it going here, your Washington Capitals went out and they traded Garnet Hathaway and Dmitry Orlov to the Boston Bruins. Why? Why did they do that? Because, well, for one, Garnet Hathaway and Dmitry Orlov's contracts were up at the end of the year. And most notably about um, Dmitry Orlov is there were some sticking points. There were conversations going on between Dmitry Orlov and his agent, uh, or excuse me, Brian McClellan, and they were not able to come together as far as the term or the length of the contract is concerned. I think that ultimately they tried to bring Dimitri back to this team. We know what he uh, means to this team. He is a good two-way defenseman. He's a tough guy out there. He's um, a, a tough guy to drive off the puck. Just a really great uh, player, Dimitri Orlov. So it's going to be tough to move on from him. And for me, as a fan, it's uh, particularly tough. And I know you're not supposed to have like attachments or, you know, sentimental feelings about these people or anything like that. But I have followed Dimitri Orlov's career since from the very beginning. So to see him move on from this team, you know, to be a certain extent, it's kind of sad. Got to be honest with you to see him move along. And, you know, same goes for Garnet Hathaway. He came to this team and provided that edge, that tough guy, that sandpaper that I loved on that fourth line. And uh, I don't know if that fourth line is going to be the same uh, without him. It was kind of a questionable move. Again, I understand why they did it. I understand that uh, Garnet Hathaway's career uh, or his contract was up at the end of this season. So that's why they did it. So ultimately, if those guys, both of them moved on to the Boston Bruins to help bolster an already really robust team, the best record uh, in the NHL. And this team is poised, the Boston Bruins, that is, to make the best push I can think possible because they were already a good team. But to add Garnet Hathaway and Dmitry Orlov to the mix, that makes them an outstanding team. And uh, the odds of them doing you know big things this uh, postseason are pretty pretty big, I gotta say. So I understand why Boston did it, and you know it is just it's some tough days ahead as a Caps fan. Like I talked about, you know you follow this team for so many years, and you see these kind of players develop into who they are and uh, kind of mature and kind of grow into their careers, and then to see them get traded away. Kind of a sad day, I got to be honest with you. So uh, just taking a look at it here, the trade, the Bruins get defenseman Dmitry Orloff, 50% of the salary retained from the Wild, 25% from the Capitals, and forward Garnet Hathaway. The Capitals get forward Craig Smith, forward uh, actually the Capitals, that ends up moving on a 2023 first round pick, a 2025 second round pick, and a 2024 third round pick. Um, so just um, th that is the assets. So that's uh, the take on it uh, for the Boston Bruins and the Capitals. The Bostons have acquired uh, Dmitry Orloff and Garnet Hathaway. So just um, again, it's a tough, a tough thing to follow the team and to see them move on. 
but that's what happens. That's the nature of the beast. But Orloff, 31, was in his 11th season with the Caps. He's recorded 256 points, 60 goals, and 196 assists through 686 career games with the team. Hathaway, who joined Washington in 2019 after four seasons with Calgary, has scored nine goals and added seven assists through 59 games this season. Uh, the Bruins 43-8-5 and five lead the Atlantic, while the Capitals 28-25-6 and six sit sixth in the Metro. And that was before the game tonight. So, you know, just tough all around, um, tough all, a, a tough day to be a Caps fan in general as they lose two huge pieces and they continue losing games. Uh, they lost a game tonight against Anaheim, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, just a tough thing, and it's... um. You know, like I say, a tough thing as a fan uh, to take a look at it and why they did it. Um, but taking a look at it ultimately from the Capitals' perspective, the fact that management recognizes that this team isn't where they need to be uh, and truly contend is so important. Too often teams just want to reach the playoffs and hope for the best. Instead, Washington's going to get a few ass assets on expiring contracts and figure out where to go from there. These trades won't stop the team from trying despite all of their brokenness this year, but it puts them in a better position moving forward. That said, they should have been pushing more back here, and that's the trouble of packaging assets together again. And that's what that was all about is this year, Brian McClellan taking a look at this team and, uh, you know, just sizing it up and saying this team uh, needs to get better, you know, and, and I talked about this on this podcast last week, that last week's games were going to be a good measuring stick, a litmus test. And uh, well, I hate to say I told you so, but uh, I mean, here we go, here we are. And you are starting to see the dominoes fall on this Caps team. And, and it's my belief that, you know, you're starting to see the rock, the red era that we've loved for so many years, slowly start to erode and, and wash away. I, do, I think this is just the first of many moves on this team between now and the trade deadline and then subsequent moves uh, in July uh, during uh, free agency as well. So it is going to be some interesting time. And I think you're starting to see the beginning of a slow rebuild on this team. I mean, I really think that you are. And, and it's time. You know, what you saw out on the ice, you were starting to see the age creep in. You were starting to see players, you know, suffering more injuries than they've ever suffered before. And I understand why they did it. They wanted to maintain that nucleus that got them that Stanley Cup in 2018. And they wanted to see if they could keep the magic going, you know, and see if you could you know, keep parlaying the magic. But ultimately, you were starting to see it. You know, you saw it in Nick Baxter with his hip, <coughs> excuse me, his hip resurfacing. You've seen TJ Oshie in and out of the lineup. You've seen certain players that have been steady forces on this team for so many years kind of their production start to slip. So it is time. It's a painful thing to, you know, if you're a longtime Caps fan to witness it, but changes are coming. And, you know, one of the things that I spoke about is the blue line only makes sense. And I think you'll probably see more movement on the blue line. And why do I say that is because John Carlson is the only cap under contract uh, after this season. So Dmitry Orloff, to a certain extent, made sense, uh, you know, despite the fact that he was loved in Washington and his great contributions to this team, it didn't seem like his agent and Brian McClellan were going to be able to come together in the middle and, you know, come up with some sort of deal. So it was advantageous for the Capitals to move on from Dmitry Orloff because otherwise he would have walked and the Capitals would have gotten zero. Same goes for Garnett Hathaway. They probably sized it up and thought, they weren't going to get enough either that or Boston just pursued uh, the cap so much and said they really wanted to have Dmitry Orloff and Garnet Hathaway just because of the tough guy factor and just the intangibles. Um, it's going to be interesting, like I say, what uh, you know that fourth line looks like without Hathaway out there because that was such a dynamic line out there with Hathaway, Dowd, and it was Hagelin before and then. But you know, we, it's been a, a lot of different players in between there. But the the steady eddies on that fourth line have been Hathaway and Dowd. So to break that up, you know, it is it's unfortunate. It was such a great line, a productive line for this Caps team uh, that it's going to be a little bit more difficult uh, going forward. All right. So after the break here, we're going to talk about the trade. You know, we know the players that were moved, but ultimately why was it done? 
You know, uh, it, it seems to be such a, a given notion that this team is always going to make it to the playoffs, that every year they're going to make it to the playoffs. Is this going to be the first time that they've missed the playoffs in a lot of years? We'll talk about that next. Looking for a delicious treat, but don't want all the fat and calories? Then you got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and I know my goal is to eat a little healthier this year. If you're like me, where you want to eat healthier, but don't want to compromise on taste, then man, I've got the thing for you. You got to try a Built Bar. With Built Healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious, you won't think they're good for you. Perfect for your New Year's resolution. What makes Built so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% chocolate. Yeah, that's right, 100% real chocolate. And I've spoke for a long time about how you can get these at built.com, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. If you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter, and churro. You can thank me later. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So in this next segment here, we're going to talk about the movement. We know that Garnet Hathaway and Dmitry Orloff were traded to the Boston Bruins and returned to the Caps, got Craig Smith and some draft picks. But ultimately, why did they do it? And what does it mean for this Caps team going forward? I do think that the Capitals will still try to be competitive as best they can this year. Um, I don't think they're going to try to tank. You know, I hear a lot of ch chatter out there that maybe the Caps should try to, to tank and see if they can get in on the Connor Bedard sweepstakes. But I don't think that's the right approach. Um, you know, uh, primarily what they got in return so far is Craig Smith. So, of course, we will see him on the lineup with the Caps, but the draft picks, um, those will take some years uh, to to come to fruition. So it is going to be, you know, it's going to take some time uh, for some of those players to to work up into the big team and, and uh, have them be integrated uh, into the team. So that's what it's about is the Capitals. Uh, they saw what they had out on the ice and it wasn't enough. And it was my belief and it should be your belief uh, that it wasn't enough that you saw out on the ice. This team has lost six games in a row. Uh, the game tonight in particular against the Ducks, there is absolutely no way that they should not have won that game. And I'll, I'll, again, I'm going to talk about that in the final segment, but that is just the beginning of why all of this has happened. They lost the two games against Carolina. They lost the game against the Panthers. You know, they lost the game against the Sharks after beating the Bruins. Inconsistency abounds on this team. That is ultimately why they made the moves because it wasn't working. And if it's not working, why try to keep retreading that tire year in and year out? Uh, you got to try to make some changes. And I, you know, this Caps team has been a little bit more reluctant uh, to make change more than uh, a lot of other teams out there. So I think that they're kind of getting you know, forced into that position uh, to try to, to, to make some changes because it's not just change for change sake, but it's, you know, it's, it's the important thing if this caps team wants to stay competitive. Um, and that's, that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to make some changes. Otherwise you can keep trying to do the same thing year in and year out, and you'll see the same results again and again. GM Brian McClellan thanked Orloff and Hathaway for their contributions to the organization would go on to explain the reasoning for the deal. He said, we would like to thank Dimitri and Garnet for their contributions to our organization, McClellan said. Dimitri has been with our organization for almost 14 years and was a key contributor in helping us win the Stanley Cup in 2018. Garnet has been an important part of our team and a role model off the ice for his contributions to our community. We wish both of these players the best in Boston. This trade allows us to acquire draft capital, infuse youth, and restock our system. While this season has proven challenging with injuries to our significant players, we are in a position to use some of our current assets to retool our club and build a competitive team moving forward. And, uh, you know, this is something that we've talked about for quite some time and the beat writers for the capitals have spoke of for some time is that there were certain promises made to 
Alex Ovechkin that he was going to play on a competitive team. Well, like Frank Severali said, he said it doesn't seem like the Capitals are living up to their end of the bargain because they're not competitive. Was the game that you saw this last week, um, what, was that a competitive team? Does that put uh, um, Alex Ovechkin in a good position uh, to win another Stanley Cup? No, it doesn't. So that is why the changes had to be made. And, you know, I'm already starting to see the comments trickle in on Twitter and YouTube saying, what are you doing? We love those players. Yeah, but it, it was going to be, it's going to be a season um, that's going to be cut short. Um, I think that the Capitals will wrap it up at the end of the season and there will be no postseason for the first time since 2014 you know, during the Adam Oates era when he was the one pushing the buttons and pulling the string for the Capitals behind the bench. So again, this has been something that's been looming for quite some time. It's been said that this could have been done years ago, but the Caps were so reluctant. And a, an interesting piece that I had heard is that the Capitals were on the verge of doing a rebuild and then they won the Stanley Cup kind of unexpectedly. And, you know, it kind of just the stars aligned and they found a way to win a Stanley Cup. And then they're like, well, we don't know if we want to break up the band. You know, this team just won a Stanley Cup. You know, this is all conjecture, but this is these are the things that you hear out there. Washington's Thursday trade is a strong indicator of what route the team is taking at the deadline selling. The Capitals are still very much in the playoff race with the team sitting just one point behind Pittsburgh for the second wild card spot. There will also likely be uh, to add some more help on the blue line as the losing Orloff and having John Carlson, the long term injured reserve in the thick of the playoff push is a major loss. So that is why you saw Dylan Mickelrath in there. That is also why you saw Irwin in there. I like Dylan's game and what he brings. He is uh, what six foot five and 230 pounds. What's not to like about it. He dropped the gloves in the game tonight and won the fight. You know, I, I think that the knee jerk reaction is that you have to go outside of the organization and bring someone in. This is a guy that has, he has some NHL experience, Dylan Mickelrath, that is. And he also has some NHL experience and AHL experience, but you know, he is playing a big role. Same goes for Matt Irwin out there. Um, so, you know, again, it would be nice to get some grade A blue liner out there, but is it ultimately going to be in the Capitals budget? That remains to be seen. I think that they have to develop. I mean, who are the two big um, assets down in Hershey? Lucas Johansson and Alex Alexiev. There's also Vincent Iorio and uh, those guys down there, but they're not ready right now. What is the one thing that we know about Alex Alexiev? And what's the one thing we know about Lucas Johansson? Every year, these last few years, they make it to training camp. And every year, subsequently, they get reassigned down to Hershey. What does that tell you? It tells you that they're not ready. Uh, some people would say that is just um, uh, Peter Laviolette. That's his politics. And before that, that was Barry Trotz. Two head coaches that were reluctant to get younger, perhaps. But I think that even Brian McClellan, the GM of this team, is recognizing that this team needs to get younger. That is the direction that the National Hockey League is going. And to be having the oldest team, and I know that changes from time to time based on acquisitions and departures, that kind of thing. But as it stands right now, the Capitals are the oldest team in the NHL. You know, and they've done their best and they, they've they been able to do it for so many years, but it's, you know, you can't fight off father time um, and uh, father time is undefeated and all those things that they say. So it is. And now that you're even seeing Brian McClellan talking about the need for this team to retool and get younger it's really starting to sink in. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's had some meetings uh, with Ted Leonsis and kind of said, in, you know, saying, hey, Mac, what what's going on out here? Why aren't we having a competitive uh, product? You know, you know, how far has this team fallen from grace from 2018 to missing the playoffs? Most likely, in my opinion, they will miss the playoffs for the first time in quite some time. Bringing in Smith, meanwhile, gives the team another option at forward. The 33-year-old is a versatile depth player and another veteran presence who can play well at both ends of the ice. There is still time to make moves with a deadline, not until March 3rd at 3 p.m. And given the deals made before the puck drop, don't be surprised if more news comes out of D.C. writes Washington Hockey Now. Again, I do expect the Capitals to be making 
more moves. This is just the beginning. As far as the Craig Smith thing uh, goes, this is the last year of his deal. Uh, so does he have a long-term home in Washington? I guess it remains to be seen how he plays here. But, you know, I think that to a certain extent, um, the, in order for that deal to work, Boston said, you have to take his contract off our books. Uh, I think that that is probably the case of what happened there because um, I was reading uh, some reports that they were shopping him in general. I think that they weren't, um, you know, really pleased with his production in Boston. So they were trying to get his contract off the books, kind of similar to what you have heard about Anthony Mantha as well, except Anthony Mantha has one year left after this year, a left on his contract, but it is going to be difficult to try to shop Anthony Mantha as he sits on the injured reserve list. But uh, uh, players that I could see moving right now, Lars Eller, again, last year of his contract, and the entire Capitals blue line saved John Carlson because they are all on expiring contracts. So unless some of those uh, Caps blue liners defensemen are willing to take some hometown discounts or uh, they're just satisfied with whatever offer they're given, you could see a good chunk of those guys get traded or moved on uh, from. So some tough days ahead, some tough decisions. And this is something, this is all the perils of being in win now mode. Now the Capitals, now Brian McClellan is realizing that, you know, he needs to restock the, the, the farm system, the AHL bears and ECHL uh, stingrays there. So tough things ahead, tough, tough decisions going forward, but I think it's a good move going forward. The Capitals do have uh, some first round picks in this next draft. Uh, so that is putting them in a good position. This is supposed to be a really good draft. So it's a first round pick and they have some, uh, I want to say like three picks uh, in this next draft coming up here. Um, so it puts them in a good position. Uh, like I said, it is poised to be a good draft this coming season. So Hopefully, especially, I know they'll have at least that one first round pick in there. It's going to put them in a good position to, to really bolster this team and to get younger and to get better. Uh, there are a lot of guys out there that, um, you know, have been kind of stewing in Hershey for a while. See Hendricks LaPierre and Connor McMichael, right? So, um, and I've heard rumblings out there about Hendricks LaPierre that there may be a little bit discontent with him. Is there the possibility that the Capitals move on from Hendricks LaPierre? Again, this is all just what I'm hearing. You know, I hear a lot of different sources. Um, so I guess it remains to be seen what the Capitals happen to do at the deadline. Again, like I talked about, the trade deadline is next Friday, March 3rd. I do expect to see more activity from the Capitals, potentially more players that you've grown to love uh, from watching this, these, this team, all these you know many years that you followed them move on because they're on expiring contracts or it's just not working. And some of them might be hit home a little bit more than others. Um, so it is going to be interesting days. That is for sure. All right. So after the break here, we will talk about the game tonight against the Anaheim Ducks. It was one of the games that on paper, it seems like it should have been a slam dunk. Why wasn't it? We'll talk about that next. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Capitals drop their sixth game to the Anaheim Ducks, and it was a tough one out there, suffice it to say. The Capitals drop six games in a row. This one to the Ducks. What went wrong? The Caps offense was actually humming along pretty well for the most part, I got to say. But then they ran into the brick wall known as Gibson uh, in Anaheim. And he pro uh, proved to be too much uh, for the Capitals to handle. They were getting shots on net. Um, it's just that they weren't able to find the back of the net. And that is part of what you're going to have to do if you want to win games. So taking a look at it, John Gibson stopped 41 of 43. So the Capitals were getting shots on net. They were trying to, to score. They were giving, doing their level best. Um, but again, it's a tough thing out there, uh, you know, for the Capitals going forward. These games that I revered as must-win games, they are finding a way to lose those games and how do they turn it around? That is the big question. Um, you did see there were some bright spots out there. Wilson led the way with five hits. Lindgren made 15 of saved 15 of 18. Gustafson now has five assists in his last four games. Oh, she led the team with six shots. 
Um, and then you saw the fight out there between Tom Wilson and Dylan Mickelrath. And I got to say that it's my belief that both of the caps, Tom and Dylan, won their respective fights. And, you know, it was one of the things out there that the frustration was starting to boil over. Tom Wilson in particular, you know, I, I know he's only been back here for a, uh, a few games here, but I think that you can already still t- tell that he's trying to to change the momentum of this team to try to get them to start to win games. And for Dylan, good on him. I mean, he's a huge dude. Uh, like a six five, two thirty, something like that. I would not want to drop the gloves against him. So it is good that they have another guy that can be the tough guy, the enforcer, because Lord knows Tom Wilson can do it all, and he can't do it now. The Garnet Hathaway isn't in the lineup, and you know, like I've spoke of about Garnet Hathaways, he wasn't necessarily a fighter per se, but he was just kind of that instigator, you know, the guy that's chirping up in your ears really close, saying awful things that irritate you. Um, and that's what he, one of the things he was good at. Again, he also scored decent goals and all that kind of thing. But uh, again, that is what they need on this team is they need more players like a Garnet Hathaway that, you know, they're going to have to figure out who is, who is that going to be? Uh, that is a tough one going forward. The Capitals played a strong game. You know, they dominated offensively, but uh, you know, it was just John Gibson and two odd man breaks. Uh, plus, you know, that one that they had to review that goal, you know, that's what it all came down to. And it was a tough, it was a tough night for the caps and they hope that they can turn it around, but it is not going to be easy as they play the, this weekend against the Rangers and the Sabres, you know, that's, those aren't going to be easy outs. Uh, the Rangers in particular, they sit in third place in the Metro. You got Carolina, New Jersey, and the New York Rangers. If they can find a way to win that, I would be most surprised. Again, as I talked on, you know, to different people um, about this uh, team, I said, well, there is absolutely no reason why they should lose this game tonight against Anaheim, one of the worst teams in all of the NHL. Yes, yeah, kind of similar to the San Jose Sharks game, and they still found a way to lose. Why is that? They ran into that brick wall known as John Gibson. It's just the Capitals' luck that they have to play John Gibson and the Anaheim Ducks when he decides to just really ratchet it up a notch. So I don't want to even really talk about this game tonight too much. The big thing for me um, going as I close out the show here is the loss, the substantial loss of Garnet Hathaway and Dmitry Orloff on this team. Huge players on this team. We will miss them. That is for sure. Um, as we heard uh, Brian McClellan talk about earlier, thanking those guys for their contributions. And I thank them for their contributions. If they happen to see or hear this, just big fans. And I wish I wish them nothing but the best. And, you know, for some reason, if the Caps make an early exit, I'll be pushing for them in Boston when the season's done because I'm still a fan of Dmitry Orloff and Garnet Hathaway at the end of the day. Um, I know they're playing on, you know, uh, somewhat of a rival of the Capitals, but, you know, what if the Capitals make an early exit, I'm still going to be pushing for those guys to do great things. I think they're two really rock-solid hockey players and, you know, just really kind of endeared themselves to this this fan base. And to me, I loved watching those guys play night in and night out. And, um, you know, it's tough. You know, like I say, as a longtime fan of this team, to see two huge players, in my opinion, move on from this team, I understand why the change is made. And I understand that it was the right decision to make. It doesn't make it any easier, though. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Again, you can find this podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, YouTube, wherever you find your podcast. So make sure and hit that follow or subscribe button. That way you will know when the new podcasts are available. Also, for your second listen, check out NHL Prospects to find out about the next generation of hockey players and who's coming up the pike. If you want to find out more about Connor Bedard and the rest of the prospects, then make your second listen locked on NHL prospects to hear about all of those, those young players uh, that are coming up. It is exciting to see these young players and it is a young crop of you know, up and coming hockey players uh, that they talk about on that show. And it is so much fun to listen to. So once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it's your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.